Okay, now for the fan commentary of Disney vs. Non-Disney Villains Part 3, Round 2B. To be or not to be? Eh, just trying to be funny. So, we go into this prologue, um... This interesting bit with this one. Well, it's back to the hand-drawn realm. Good morning, America. This is Snapper Car reporting to you on this fine Friday morning. Interesting, I can tell, but I don't think I've seen this one because, you know, I don't watch a lot of DC cartoons, but I only watch, like, Superman the Animated Series and Batman the Animated Series. Also, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. So, I can tell by the animation, that's probably from a DC Animated Series of Justice League, I believe that is. So... I guess they're just, I, they're not saying, oh, DC's no part of it. No, it's just more just representation, using it to represent certain things. Like, kind of like with Dante's Inferno, where it's not saying Dante's Inferno is part of it, but it's just representing it. It's just being used. Well, ballots are being checked and signs are being taken because re-election day is just around the corner. President Martin Thomas, having served two terms, is still in the way for a new era. I guess they couldn't find an image for uh, some character. I guess they just made up a character, I guess. I don't know. Or was there one, or you, could you guys not find one? The race has been narrowed down to two major candidates. Representing the Democratic Party is Abraham Kane, mayor of Detroit Deluxe and CEO of Kane & Company. Yeah, of course. It's a presidential election. Yeah, let's have that in the war. Kane's platform is an orthodox one. His most controversial idea being the outlawing of cars and automobiles. Well, I can see why that'd be controversial. Why he would do that, I don't know, but I'm not one to judge. I would guess there'd be so many protesters going against Abraham Kane for the banning auto machines, you know? You know, banning cars and stuff. Funding Kane's campaign is his business associated friend, David Zanitel. That's a weird photo to pick for that one. Wonder why not use that pig? I'm just saying, cause it just kind of looks goofy. Enterprises. Running for the Republican Party is the other dog that is surprising us all, John Bishop. Largely unheard of in the world of politics thus far, Bishop presents a very conservative mindset, but one that isn't without suspicion. Bishop seems rather apprehensive to reveal details of his past. Some experts are even going as far as to call forgery on his birth certificate. Hmm. So we have a presidential election between Abraham Cain and Agent Bishop. Although people who just hate the idea of cars and automobiles being, you know, banned, I would see them voting for Agent Bishop instead. Despite this, approval rates are neck and neck with Cain. But then again, politics are very heated. There's no black and white, good and evil in it. It's just shades of gray. This firm idea of military is in a very well compromised tax. Which, again, politics is a really, really heated subject, right up next to religion. As well as popular appeal garnered by his campaign manager. Okay, that's a very goofy image. I'm not, okay, I don't, don't complain about it. It's, 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 I'm not sure if Ken Mansley's just doing it just to be goofy for this one, just to make people laugh for this one. Just to make a goofy face for that one. Like, hey, just use my face that way to lighten people up. Just be silly. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it just looks... <laughs> looks a little silly of him. Election day is just short of two months away. Who would take the position as leader of the free world? Only time will tell. This is Snapper Carr saying, I need a new paycheck. Don't we all? Okay, and then we see Valmond is having difficulties with his finances after this this backle after the debacle with Shindu. Huh. Huh. I'm finally rid of that pestilent lizard Shendu. The dark hands will rise oh, again. No more. Oh, I guess he's not hungry. Embark on our epic crime spree. Oh, you're talking, Dixie. 
Oh, sure. Talk about committing crime while you're in a restaurant in public. Hmm. I, I gotta make them pay for the food? Ah. Okay, then we see, um... Flight, along with all these forces, uh, hold on. Begins rounding up the last of Zira's followers. Including having his men capture Ka for unknown reason. Really? Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, it looks like Ka is going to be captured, uh. Oh, dear. Well, now he's captured. Okay, now we go to the first fight. We got, um, Evil Lant... Oh, no, wait. Now we go to the first fight, which is... Monstro versus Admiral Zhao, made by Sony Shadow 21. Interesting. So, Mach requires a blood sacrifice, and hold on. Evil spell backwards I do like this theme. So, he requires the help from Evil Manta, who is still in league with the Acolytes. And the one for the sacrifice would be Admiral Zhao. And, rather than getting his hands dirty, he decides to send, you know, unleash Monstro the Whale. Alright, so. This is a video game music. I want to know if this is from a video game music. I hope it's not a copyright claim music, because it's just an awesome theme. Monster arises from the depths of the oceans and attacks a whole fleet of ships lead by Zhao. You know, it's been a long time since we had Pinocchio villains. Since part one with Stromboli in it in round eight, I believe. And now all of a sudden we get, oh, now we get another Pinocchio villain in this. At part three. All of a sudden they're going to... Fire. Well, I'm... Lucky day. Wait for it. And... Shows himself up again. Can't be. Yeah. So... Also... Since we have Pinocchio villains in the... There now, I guess, uh... Well, actually, spoilers, it turns out that's all we got in this part three is Monstro. I mean, why not the other Pinocchio villains? We got Honest Dawn and Gideon. You know, Jay Worthington, Foul Fellow, you know, that's the fox, and Gideon the cat, who's very mute. And the only thing I can think of is, I would imagine if Mach would get more blood sacrifices, it'd be... The target would be Honest John and Gideon. What would it be like if he got Stryker to go get after them? Can anyone imagine Stryker versus Honest John and Gideon? I'm just say saying. Oh, well, it looks like Admiral Zhao has thought of something that's similar to Pinocchio's idea. You know, go through that wall. Oh, got out of the ship. And, oh, similar fate to how he was in the film. And, is that supposed to be a skull or, or a fractured body? I can't... I think that's a teeth. And, because Monstro is dead and Danable Jow wins. And now for the next fight is, uh... Captain Hook versus Fuhrer King Bradley. With Frollo back in his seat of power in France, he's... Well, ever since he got back from, you know, hell itself, and since the Equalist led by Ahmad took over all of Europe. So, yeah, of course he would be back in his seat of power, so... But is challenged by the arrival of viewer King Bradley, who proposes an alliance. Frollo accepts any he has, but... He has to challenge Captain Hook first. Yeah, even though I complain about Disney versus anime villains, how it's so me 
amateurish because it looks like it's mostly just, you know, what I've already explained about it. This is the idea of Disney versus anime villains I would have liked to see. Not something from four kids, not something from, like, not really anime, but this is how I would imagine it. I'm just saying. Oh, I went to talk too much, so, so I guess here King Bradley gets to join. Unknown to them that he's a homunculi, sent to spy on Frollo's faction. Or, of course, he's just waiting for the opportunity to bring Frollo back to hell. Okay, now for the next side is... Wait, this is an interesting one. It's Hannibal McFist versus Storm Shadow made by Gord Hanks. Yeah, I'm familiar with this one. It's one of the few newer Disney XD cartoons. You know, when it turned... In, it went from Toon Disney to Disney XD. So, these characters are from Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja. If not many people have heard of it, I'll leave the link down below so you guys might know of it. So, Cobra Commander sends the uh, Storm Shadow to... What was it again? To find new sources to revenue to rebuild Cobra. So, Storm Shadow engages industrialist Hannibal McFist. Uh, I scream a lot. Yeah, weird name, Krakenstein. Yeah, Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, has a lot of weird. Well, you know how people often swears or curse? They have the weirdest curse or saying, like, what the Jews? Like, that's the weirdest thing you would ever think of, or that's the cheese. That is way cheesy. Their swears are so cheesy. Also, yeah, I'm still watching G.I. Joe Renegades, and I'm... Right now I'm on episode 8, so I get to know that Storm Shadow and... Snake Eyes kind of known each other since childhood. He... He kind of believes that Snake Eyes killed his fa... You know, his uncle. Which, in truth, he was actually poisoned, and he saved Snake Eyes. Of course, when he shows up, he thought Snake Eyes was the one who killed him. So it was basically, he's a very vendetta villain. Well, that does also make sense for Storm Shadow to fight against these villains from Randy Cunningham since their enemy is a ninja. Yeah, but Storm Shadow wins. And now they're gonna get out of here! So, I think I'm gonna stop right here, so see you guys in the next part of this uh, commentary.